This video is to help with choosing yarn for a pattern. Sometimes we find a pattern where the recommended yarn is either discontinued or not available readily uh, near where we live. And so we need to select a different kind of yarn. There are three main considerations when we choose yarn for a project. The first one is the fiber content. We want to as closely match the fiber content, which is what the yarn is made of, um, the second is the weight of the yarn, so how thick is the yarn, and the third is to try to match gauge. Uh, so the fiber content, if the pattern was made with say a wool, this is a wool yarn here, wool or a wool, wool blend, we would want to choose another wool or wool blend. Uh, another animal fiber is alpaca, it does behave a little differently and it also looks a little different, it's quite um, got a bit of halo. So if the pattern was made using an alpaca blend, we would also want to stick with something like that. So they're the, some animal fibers. Um, here are some plant-based fibers. This is a cotton and a bamboo, and they, are, they behave with a lot more drape, and they're generally a bit heavier. So similarly, if the pattern was made using that kind of um, plant-based fiber, we would want to match that. And this is a linen, which is different again, another plant-based fiber, but you would, um, if the pattern used something like that, you would want to use um, a linen blend. If You would get a very different result if you switched out. The next consideration is the weight of the yarn. So you have here we have some very fine two-ply or lace weight yarns. If the pattern called for a lace weight yarn, you would also try, try to match it with another lace weight yarn. After already looking at the fiber content, you then want to try to match it with the same kind of, uh, same kind of weight. Now sometimes, so this is a lace weight yarn, um, or these are some examples of lace weight yarns. Um, they're sometimes called two ply and then moving up slightly thicker. We've got a three ply or light fingering So it's slightly heavier and then um, a very common yarn is a four ply um, Which is also called a fingering or a sock weight yarn Now sometimes the, the ball band itself will say so here's an example of a ball band that actually says this is um, Louie and Lola. It's a beautiful yarn and um, BFL nylon fingering. BFL just means it's a blue faced Leicester, which is a type of um, breed of sheep. And then it's got 20% nylon in it for strength. So this is a wool blend yarn. And it actually says fingering, um, which is a, also called four ply or sock weight yarn. So you could use this, this yarn would be a good choice for socks because it has a little bit of nylon for strength. Um, but sometimes the, the ball bands don't actually say the weight of the yarn on it. They um, so you tend to need to be guided perhaps a little bit by the yardage. I mean, obviously you can take a look at the yarn to see how thick it looks, um, but the yardage is another guide. So this has 365 meters in a hundred grams. And so I find, um, this is just like a little cheat sheet on, uh, the yardage roughly for these kinds of weights of yarn. So for example, a two ply or a lace weight is usually between six and 800 meters. Um, a three ply is roughly between 450 and 600 meters. Now this varies a little bit based on the fiber content. So for example, bamboo is a lot heavier. So there's a bit of a range and some, and also even in the way that it's spun. So a yarn that is woolen spun is very lofty and you might get more yardage than you would normally expect according to this guide. Um, so for example, here, I'll just use this one as an example, this top one here, Brooklyn Tweed Loft, is very, um, it's woolen spun. And so you actually get five, even though it's a four ply yarn, you get 500, me 500 meters for 100 grams, which would maybe indicate a light fingering, but because it's so lofty, it knits up more like a four ply. So um, these are just these are just sort of rough guidelines, but um, in general, you want to try to roughly stick to the the weight of the yarn, and then the yarn moves moves all the way up to you know here's a you've got five ply which is also called sport weight, then you've got um, eight ply which is also called DK, um, then you've got ten ply which is sometimes called worsted or Aran weight. And then got 12 ply bulky yarns, 
and then finally um, super bulky yarn. So you, you really would get a very different result if you swapped a bulky yarn for a, um, an A-ply yarn, for example. The third main consideration when substituting yarn is gauge. Uh, patterns, especially if they're for a garment that needs to fit, will give a gauge. So um, they'll uh, say over 10 centimeters or four inches, you should get a certain number of stitches. And so you want to knit a swatch. So if you've found a yarn, it roughly matches the fiber content, it roughly matches the weight. If you knit up a swatch on the needles that are recommended for that yarn, if you measure the gauge of the pattern, so you measure over four inches, how many stitches you get, and then see if that matches the pattern. If it does, great, away you go. If it doesn't, um, if you're only a little bit off, you might be able to just change your needle size. And so these are two, um, this is Madeleine Tosh Pashmina. This one's been knit on a slightly larger needle than this one. And as long as you're happy with the way the yarn knits um, and you match gauge, away you go. Um, if you change your needle size, but you don't really particularly like the fabric, you perhaps prefer the other one that was a little bit off gauge, you might be able to just knit a size up or a size down. If your um, gauge, for example, if the pattern said it was 22 stitches over four inches and you were getting 21 stitches over four inches, your garment would turn out to be a little bit bigger. And so you, you might try just knitting the, the size down. Um, if you're if you were getting, if the pattern was say for 21 stitches and you were getting 22, then you might want to knit a size up. It's pretty simple to do the, the math on gauge, but I'll do that in another video.